Checking out some amazing views here in Jasper National Park, Canada. Just went on a hike. My apartment is uh, somewhere over there across the river and then I hiked into town. There's the town of Jasper. And then you come down a trail and over the Athabasca River there. It's uh, warm enough I got my shirt off here. It's getting a little hot hiking along. So uh, in this video I'm going to tell the story of a cult that I was very briefly sort of entangled in um, in Sedona, Arizona. So this was the summer of 1996 and I tell this story in two of my books, both Kundalini and the Art of Being and Following My Thumb. So um, Kundalini and the Art of Being is uh, a story of my both spiritual experiences and uh, adventure traveling experiences, hitchhiking all around the United States, um, in uh, 1993 to 1996. And then my book, Following My Thumb, chronicles my travels from 1990 to 2000, but then it skips over that chunk from 1993 to 1996, um, and, uh, and that book focuses more on my travels. So um, this story sort of ties the two books together and shows how they kind of merge because it's uh, in the middle of both of them. So I was at a rainbow gathering in Northern California, and I was just hitchhiking around for that summer. Um, I had a couple of communities in mind to visit that I discovered through a, uh, a, a booklet, a community um, listings booklet. Uh, there wasn't, the internet was just barely, you know, coming on at that point, and I didn't have email address, I'd never used the internet or anything. And so um, I had this community in mind to visit in Sedona, Arizona. So I'm in uh, Northern California at this rainbow gathering, and trying to figure out what I'm doing next, how I'm going to, you know, eventually end up in Arizona because I'm hitchhiking around. And uh, this guy runs up to me that I talked to earlier and said, hey, I just found a ride uh, with these two guys that are going to Sedona, Arizona, if you want to hop, uh, hop on their ride with them. So I ran down, talked with these two guys, two uh, cool guys that were driving in a van to Sedona to go to this healing fair and do their, uh, their uh, special... Uh, thing of, of didgeridoo sound healing um, and so talked with them they're they're driving straight there I'm like cool all right and I uh, had to run back to my camp you know take down my tent pack up my pack 30 minutes later I'm with them in the van we're driving to Sedona Arizona so we drive through the night we get to Sedona and uh, early that uh, or, or late the next night I think it was and uh, one of the guys is looking over a flyer for healing fair, fair they were planning to go to and all, all of a sudden he shouts to his friend dude what the hell this is in Sonoma California <laughs> not Sedona Arizona <laughs> so we driven all the way there and ended up in the wrong place for them anyways um, but they just kind of accepted it and we're like okay we'll make the most of our time here so um, I uh, uh, sleep in uh, my sleeping bag outside near a church that night and the next day then I arranged to meet with the people at this uh, community. It's called Aquarian Concepts, and they're very kind of out there, new age, you know, uh, pretty trippy ideas, but it sounded pretty intriguing. And uh, so we make an arrangement, I think it was for the next day, to meet with these, with these people, uh, with a few uh, representatives of the community. And so the next day, then my friends with the van drive me out there and uh, um, meet up. They drop me off at this house. I walk into this house, and it's a very sort of intense... Um, you know, the people look like characters out of Star Trek or something and, and everything's kind of very serious and, and so I sit down uh, on this, in this de designated chair and then, and then there's like three chairs across from me that they sit in and then we proceed to have this kind of uh, intense uh, discussion. They ask me all sorts of spiritual questions and, you know, try to get a feel for what my view is and they express their paradigm and everything and it's very, very true out there and they really think they're like you know top-notch like you know the leaders in the world of spirituality basically and so I leave that meeting kind of like well that was interesting I'm not quite sure what I think about these people um, but they'd invited me to another um, uh, Sunday service of theirs later in the week or a few days later and so I uh, agree to go to that and show up at the, sun the Sunday service and, uh, you know, it's, it's like most of the community members, so it's a much bigger group, you know, a, a hundred or a few hundred people. 
And so we sit down uh, in the room in the rows of chairs, and the leader of the cult, Gabriel of Sedona, notice the uh, similarity of names there, um, shows up with his with his wife or his partner or whatever, um, and immediately everyone in the in the uh, room like gets up and starts bowing to them and saying, "Welcome, prince and princess." And I'm just kind of looking around like, "Hmm, I'm not really, I'm not really digging this vibe so much." And uh, so I, you know, sit through the the sermon. The guy is very sort of colorful and charismatic and tells funny stories. And you know, he's very, you know, excited about, you know, he knows that they're, you know, an awesome spiritual, you know, phenomenon, and they're doing great things, and they're definitely on the truth and everything. And so I uh, leave leave that one even feeling more like. I don't know what's the deal here, but I don't think this is really what I'm looking for. But I have yet another invitation to come check out the community, the community grounds, which sound uh, pretty interesting. And so I'm kind of like, you know, on the edge about this. And so we, uh, I meet up with my my two friends again, um, Natty and uh, Apollo were the two guys' names. Uh, They were from Canada. And um, we spend the night in uh, sleeping outside of town camped out in the in the desert Sedona Arizona is like you know red rock desert cliffs and canyons and stuff with you know supposed energy vortexes very intense place and so uh the next morning after this we're driving into town and uh we pick up a hitchhiker and he um you know hops in the van in the back of the van along with me uh I'm sitting in the back seat and um, you know, say, hey, how's it going? What's what's going on? Where are you headed? And then uh, ask him his name, and he says, Gabriel. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is the third Gabriel, <laughs> including me, in the past few days. This is weird. And so just uh, sort of off the cuff, I just decided uh, to ask him about this community in case he might have had some experiences with it. And um, sure enough, he's like, yes, my mom was involved with this community. She was uh, together with this guy, she got pregnant from him, and uh, um, the community decided that uh, they didn't like their relationship, and they convinced the guy to separate from the woman, this guy's mom, despite the fact that she was pre- pregnant with his child, and then, like, you know, banned her from the community, kicked her out. And that was the final confirmation for me, like, okay, this place is definitely whacked out, no point in in investigating any further. Um, so uh, that was pretty much it. Um, I uh, ended up running into a few of the community members later. They actually picked me up hitchhiking, that's right. Um, and uh, it was a very awkward <laughs> ride, to say the least, um, uh, because I'd, I think I sent them a letter saying, you know, I don't, I don't care for you guys and I'm not interested or something like that. Um, so. There you go, my experience with a strange cult in Sedona, Arizona, Aquarian Concepts, and Gabriel of Sedona. I think they're still around, um, probably uh, still preaching their stuff, so feel free to check around online if you're curious. Take care. Hey there, so it's a a couple of days later and I wanted to add a little addendum at the end of this video um, talking about my experience in Sedona, Arizona with the Korean Concepts Cult. So I thought that I would read a quick little uh, um, excerpt from my book, Following My Thumb, A Decade of Unabashed Wanderlust, which chronicles uh, my adventures from 1990 to 2000 with 26 different travel stories from around the world. So this is from that chapter describing my experience with the cult. And uh, this uh, is the end of the chapter and and it takes off uh, after I've just learned that um, from that other guy named Gabriel about the experience with his mom uh, getting kicked out of, out of the cult and everything. This story sent shivers down my spine, as well as confirmed my gut feelings that something there was seriously out of balance. It also left me with lingering feelings of distrust, disillusionment, disillusionment and sadness that such unfeeling manipulation could disguise itself as spiritual truth to those not looking beneath the surface. And part of me felt a little foolish for getting involved with them at all, however briefly. Over the next few days, I happened to talk with a few other folks who had been involved with the community. I discovered that some of the leader's many outrageous claims about himself and his cult were that he considered his group to embody the highest spiritual truth on the planet. Hey, that's a new one. Himself to be a reincarnation of the Apostle Paul. Perhaps so, but I'm not washing that one down with Kool-Aid. 
that he was the doorway to the fourth dimension, come on, everyone knows it was the Beatles, that the energy vortexes around Sedona were of his own making, how old was this guy, 4.6 billion years? And that crop circles were his creations from past lives, from past lifetimes. Let me guess, and he also built the Sphinx single-handedly. As my old college physics teacher would have put it, this guy had an ego roughly the size of the observable universe. I had a brief desire to let the other people of the community know that they were being led down the wrong path, but I quickly concluded that it wasn't my business. Was there really a wrong path anyway? If there was one, any one belief that I wholeheartedly held, held dear, it was that of individual free will. It wasn't for me to decide another's journey. They were free to learn their own lessons and I would learn mine. In the meantime, I, would, I felt incredibly grateful to still have my freedom to make my own decisions and choose my own destiny. So that's uh, from chapter nine in Following My Thumb, A Decade of Unabashed Wanderlust. I'll go ahead and put a link down um, below this video to the book, available on Amazon.com as both a paperback and a ebook. Um, lots of really fun, uh, funny, exciting, adventurous, and thought-provoking stories in this book. So uh, feel free to take a look, check out some of the reviews, and maybe pick up a copy. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.